Will crypto.com thrive or take a dive post FTX? I think it's going to thrive and I think it's going to thrive in such a big way. In fact, I think the future of crypto.com and CRO is going to be so amazing. The price of CRO may be low, but it's not a representation of how well the Kronos chain is actually doing. The Kronos chain is doing absolutely fantastic. It has over 1 million unique addresses. And also in terms of DeFi, they actually have a higher TVL than Solana and Phantom. And when it comes to crypto.com, the exchange, what bad thing happened? A lot of people, they were saying, oh, you know, crypto.com is going to go down. They were saying, oh, they're playing with customer funds. A lot of people were saying, oh, they can't survive a bank run, all of this. But take a look at crypto.com right now. You know, that's all just nonsense. A lot of people trying to spread fun. Nothing bad happened to crypto.com. And in fact, they're actually thriving. You take a look at even during a bear market, they're sponsoring the FIFA World Cup. And also you add on top of that, they have over 70 million users. I mean, Crypto.com isn't going anywhere. It's not going down. And in fact, I think CRO could potentially do a 30x very easily the next bull run. I truly do. And now that's not financial advice. But when I just take a look at the Chrono chain, when I take a look at how amazing it is, I mean, I just don't see why $2 is really out of the realm of possibility. You take a look at it last year, right? You know, the Kronos chain last year was nowhere near as good as it was today. Crypto.com, the exchange is nowhere as strong as it is today. And still even last year, it was able to reach nearly a dollar. So during the next bull run, I don't see why $2 is really out of the realm of possibility. And this whole FTX situation, it did affect CRO in a negative way, right? But I think it's actually a blessing in disguise because yeah, sure, it sucks for people who bought CRO a couple months ago. Maybe they went all in or some people who bought CRO last year, including myself, I've been buying CRO ever since last year. Yeah, of course, sure, it sucks to see my portfolio down. Of course, that sucks, but I'm not selling any of my CRO. You know, I do not want to sell CRO whatsoever. In fact, I don't want to sell any of my cryptos whatsoever because as long as I don't sell, I view it as having an unrealized loss. And now that's not financial advice, but the way I take a look at it, the only way I view it as a realized loss is if I sell. Being able to buy CRO below 10 cents, are you kidding me? That's absolutely insane. I am taking advantage of this dip as much as I possibly can. And now it could very well go lower. Who knows, right? Let's say, you know, DCG or let's say Genesis or let's say they implode or let's say another cryptocurrency exchange goes down. I mean, you never really know, you know, the whole crypto space could go down even lower if something like that were to happen. I mean, you just can never ever predict the future. But with that being said, I'll still keep buying more because I have conviction when it comes to CRO. I believe in the future of the Kronos chain. I believe that CRO will do amazing the next bull run. So, you know, buying below 10 cents, I think is just a no brainer, especially for me. And when it comes to FTX related things, the now bankrupt BlockFi has sued Sam Bankman frieds holding company. BlockFi gave a $275 million loan to FTX. And also on top of that, FTX promised to buy them, but that's besides the point. And Sam Bankman fried put his Robinhood shares as collateral to take this $275 million loan from BlockFi. And in my opinion, this truly puts into perspective as to how badly run a lot of crypto related companies are out there. For example, you take a look at a while back, you take a look at Celsius, you know, FTX, and now to a certain extent, BlockFi. I just think fundamentally, they're just not as good as crypto.com. Now, with that being said, of course, it's a bear market, prices are low, but if they were sound, fundamentally speaking, you know, none of this would be happening whatsoever. And look, right, I don't want to beat on them while they're down. You know, I don't want to do that whatsoever. And in fact, for those people who actually lost with Celsius, FTX, you know, and now BlockFi, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. And it's not your fault, right? It's not your fault that you chose, you know, BlockFi, FTX, Celsius. It's their fault. You know, they shouldn't be doing all of this type of nonsense. They should have had good business practices. So it's not the customer's fault whatsoever. And bear markets, they often weed out these weak players, essentially speaking. It's like in nature, right? Let's say there's a drought, you know, all the animals are struggling, all this type of stuff. You know, only the strong animals will survive to see the next season, essentially speaking. You know, just metaphorically speaking, I just view this as sort of being in nature. It's like right now, right? It's a bear market. All of the strong companies, they're going to hold. But the weak ones, the ones that have weak fundamentals, that have nonsense going on behind the scenes, they usually and typically get weeded out. The strong ones are the ones to see the future. And crypto.com is definitely a strong one. It's going to survive. I truly do believe that. It's essentially going to survive this drought, aka bear market. And when it comes to Sam Bankman Fried and FTX and Alameda Research, I mean, man. I mean, when you take a look at Sam Bankman-Fried, he ran FTX like a total clown show. I mean, truly. I mean, you take a look at how he's living in an apartment with his roommates who are running FTX, a multi-billion dollar company. I mean, who does that? Granted, it's a $50 million apartment in the Bahamas, but still, I mean, who does that, right? Who runs a multi-billion dollar company like that with a bunch of roommates living like it's, you know, he's treating it like it's happy hour. And apparently there was rumors that they were all, you know, cross dating, all this type of stuff. I mean, this is a total clown show right here. I mean, I get having roommates back in college, you know, you want to save up on rent, stuff like that. But when you're trying to run a multi-billion dollar company, 
you know, he really needs to get his priorities straight. And it's too little too late. I mean, hindsight is always twenty twenty. But when you're having, you know, roommates along with you, you know, running a multi-billion dollar company, it's just crazy to think about. And something that I learned from back in college is that an easy way to turn a best friend into an enemy is by having that person become your roommate. And back in college, I was roommates with a close friend of mine. He's still a very close friend of mine. But besides that point, right, he had his girlfriend come over there and actually live in the same apartment. And this girlfriend right here, so terrible person, just a bad person overall. And she would just wreak havoc, right? I mean, she would cause all this nonsense that goes on in the apartment. She was so rude, just a nasty individual. And that right there nearly ruined my friendship with my friend because I was telling my friend like, hey, you know, like, why does she have to be here? And he's like, oh no, he's my girlfriend. You know, oh, it's, it's fine, deal with it. Oh, just deal with it. And that's when I realized that, hey, you know, having a roommate that's your close friend, you know, it's really bad because you're gonna see, you know, all their negative sides, you know, you're gonna see all this stuff that you don't like about them and it's an easy way to turn a best friend into an enemy now that's just my personal experience but what i learned from back in college is that every time i had a roommate who wasn't my close friend let's say i just you know kind of knew them and they were my roommate you know no drama nothing whatsoever because you're able to tolerate that other person's bad attitude if you don't really know them that well right because if you know them too well you're going to call them out right you're going to be like hey i don't like this i don't like that but if you don't really know them you're going to be like you know they do something bad you're just like okay we'll just uh, you know i'll just chill i don't really know that person but in my case I was roommates with a close friend of mine, so when he did something I didn't like, I told him straight up, I was like, hey, I didn't like that, you know, this type of stuff, then arguments started happening. So if I could redo college, what I would do is I would just be roommates with people that I barely know, you know, I really would do that. So yeah, again, right, when I take a look at Sam Beckman fried living in an apartment, you know, with a bunch of roommates, you know, apparently they were all cross dating and running, you know, FTX at the same time, no wonder why they are in the position they are in right now. And with all that being said, in my opinion, crypto.com, they are here to stay. They are here for the long term. And you know, while these clown shows like FTX, they get weeded out, Crypto.com will be able to see the future. They will see the light. And in my opinion, it's going to be absolutely fantastic during the next bull run. CRO is going to rock the house. Crypto.com is going to continue to be bigger, better, and stronger than ever before. And it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I just can't wait. And make sure to click subscribe and smash that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. And it's been Lee the Captain, and I'll catch you all on the next one. I'm out. Peace. Bye.